Okay, in this lesson, we're going to talk about position, velocity, and acceleration. Our first problem says a particle's position is described by the function x of t is equal to 2t cubed minus 45t squared plus 300t plus 10, where t is greater than 0. Uh, the first thing they want, they want us to do is find the velocity and acceleration functions. So the velocity function is related to the position function in that it's the derivative. So this is going to be pretty easy to find. We're just going to take the derivative of the position function. So v of t is going to equal 6t squared minus 90t plus 300. And that's it. Now the acceleration function is just the derivative of the velocity function. So a of t is going to equal 12t minus 90. Okay. So the next thing they want us to do is to find the specific velocity and acceleration at t equals 6 seconds. So what I think would be best is if you got your calculators out and you entered these three functions in, the position, the velocity, and the acceleration. And then you could just simply go to the table and plug these in. So if you need to pause the video and enter these three things in under y1, y2, and y3. Okay, so I've already done that. And I want to find the velocity at t equals 6 seconds. So if I put in 6 for x, and I look at my second function, which is the um, velocity function, I'm getting v of 6, v of 6, So we'll start by finding the velocity at 6 seconds. And that's going to be notated as v of 6 is equal to uh, 6 times 6 squared minus 90 times 6 plus 300. Now again, you can use your calculator if you want. And when I do this, I get an answer of negative 4. The negative means that the particle is moving to the left. Now they also want us to find the acceleration at 6. So we're just going to use the acceleration function and say 12 times 6 less 90. And for this I end up getting negative 3. Okay, so I've already entered these functions in on the calculator, and what I'm going to do first is find the velocity at specifically 6 seconds. So we're going to notate, notate that as v of 6. And I'm just going to enter that in onto the table, and I'm going to go over to y sub 2, which was where my velocity function is stored, and I'm getting an answer of negative 24. Now, the second part of the question is to find the acceleration at 6 seconds. So for that, I'm just going to go to the third equation, y sub 3, which is where the acceleration is stored, and I'm getting an answer of negative 18. Now I guess it's kind of nice to know where these numbers come from rather than just relying on the calculator. So v of 6, just so you know, would be 6 times 6 squared 
minus 90 times 6, 90 times 6, So I have the position, velocity, and acceleration functions stored in my calculator under y1, y2, and y3. So the first thing I'm asked to find is the velocity at 6 seconds. And if I were to do this manually, that would entail 6 times 6 squared minus 90 times 6 plus 300. And for the acceleration at 6 seconds, that would require evaluating 12 times 6 minus 90. Since I've stored these on the calculator, it'll be much easier. I'm going to use the table feature of the calculator, and I'm going to plug in an x value of 6. When I scroll over to y sub 2, I get negative 24, which tells me that the velocity at 6 seconds is negative 24. And the negative would mean that the particle is moving to the left. Now I scroll one more over to y sub 3, which is where my acceleration function is stored, and I get uh, negative 18. Now because both the signs are negative, because both the signs are actually the same, that would mean that the particle is actually speeding up at 6 seconds. But that's something we're going to talk about a little bit later for a different question. The next question asks for the average velocity. So the average velocity is going to be found by doing the position, the change in position over the change in time. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the position at 9 seconds, and we're going to find the position at 4 seconds, and we're going to find the difference, and we're going to divide that by 9 minus 4. So it's the change in position over the change in time. So once again, if you have the position function stored in your calculator, this is going to be pretty easy. So I, had, I do have that stored under y sub 1. So I'm going to plug in uh, an x value of 9. And when I do that, I get 523. And if I plug in an x value of 4, I get 618. And this is all going to be over 9 minus 4, which is 5. So going to the calculating screen, I'm going to get 523 minus 618, which gives me negative 95. Negative 95 over 5 which I believe is negative 19. Okay, so that means the average velocity over this interval of time is going to be negative 19. Okay, in part two of the video, we're going to be looking at the question to find the time or times when the particle changes direction. Now, to figure out when a particle changes direction, we first have to see when the particle stops. And that would imply that the velocity is zero. So I'm going to start by taking the velocity function, 6t squared minus 90t plus 300. And I'm going to set it equal to zero. I'm going to find the time or the times when the velocity is zero. So in setting this up, I see that I can make my life a lot easier if I divide everything through by 6. And if I do that, I get t squared minus 15t plus 50 equals 0. Now, fortunately, this quadratic is factorable, which is just going to make our life a little bit easier than if we had to use the quadratic formula. So the factors of 50 that give us a 15 are going to be 5 and 10 and the signs are both going to be negative. So setting each of these factors equal to 0 we get t equals 5 seconds or t is equal to 10 seconds. 
So these are the two times when the particle actually stops. Now the, th the thing that's slightly confusing is just because the particle stops doesn't mean it's going to change direction. And if we think about a car that's driving along and gets to a stop sign and it slows down and ultimately stops at the stop sign, that doesn't mean it's going to turn or change direction. It's, so stopping doesn't imply changing direction. So what we need to do is we need to take this um, velocity function and on the results that we just got and look at it on a number line and do interval testing to see if the signs change. Because if the signs change, we know that there's going to be a difference between the particle going forward and the particle going backwards. So what I'm going to set up here is a number line and I'm going to start it at zero and that's because of the uh, zero right here. I know I can't really look at time below zero. And then I'm going to put 5 here, and I'm going to put 10 here. These are the two places when the particle stopped. Let's see what it was doing on either side. So again, if you have your calculator out, I think it's just going to be much easier to use the table than, uh, than just to do this manually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the test values. I'm going to try, I don't know, I'll pick something between 0 and 5, let's say 3. I'll do the velocity at 3. I'll do the velocity at 7, and I'll do the velocity at 12. I just, I'm making these uh, values up arbitrarily. And what I want to look at is not so much the numerical answer, but I want to see the sign of the answer. So I have this function entered in um, under y sub 2, and if I plug in 3, and I plug in 7, and I plug in 12, I can look at the y2 to see what the outcome is. So the first outcome that I'm getting is a, a positive number. So I'm going to write a plus here. And then I'm getting a negative number. And then I'm getting a positive number. And what that means is, in the interval of time between 0 and 5, the particle is moving to the right. At 5 seconds, it stops. And then when we see negative here, we know that it's moving to the left. So it's changing direction here. Then at 10 seconds, it stops again, and then it becomes positive again, so we know it's moving back to the right. So we see that the particle changes direction at t equals 5 seconds and t equals 10 seconds. And now we know for sure that these uh, are the locations where the sign actually changes. So a lot of students, I think, are tempted to stop right here without checking. But there's some cases where it might be plus, plus, negative, which means that it just stopped here for a moment and just kept going in the same direction. So just because a particle stops doesn't mean it's changing direction. You've got to look to see that the signs are changing.